It is the Raya Podcast. Good day. Welcome to the Tuesday show. Would you guys, what do you guys think about if I just list Saturday morning cartoons for the whole intro? <laughs> I just like to, to maybe it's just because I don't think I watched as many. My brother watched more Saturday cartoons, uh-huh. but I feel like we all watch different things and I don't know all the ones, so I don't know if we're all connected. Well, think about this. Here's a great Saturday morning cartoon. DuckTales. Yes, that was good. But I didn't remember it being Saturday morning. Yeah, that's, I. you know what? I think as a kid too, I didn't get up on Saturday morning and watch cartoons. Mm. But the Saturday morning cartoons, we would watch. You think about these ones, Nikki. Remember how they used to turn every Disney animated movie Instead of turning it, yes, and Mm -hmm. there'd be like the Aladdin show, yeah, or uh, Hercules. Listen, I'm not saying that perhaps some have been watched on Disney Plus. Yeah, I can't find anything else to watch on Disney Plus. But see, that's that's what those are. Those are Saturday morning cartoons. We just didn't watch them on Saturday mornings. I see. But if they made new whatever new Saturday morning cartoons they're making, they probably still make them, and we just don't even know because they're not for us adults. I don't think they're still Saturday cartoons. Saturday? Are they? What else are kids doing on Saturday mornings? That's true. Saturday morning cartoons to me just look like the Boomerang Channel. That's what <laughs> that's I'm seeing on here. Yeah, that's it's just the like Boomerang the Channel. Old school ones. Yeah, like the Flintstones. And the Jetsons and stuff? Is that well, what you're talking about? Johnny we Bravo were, and whatnot. Yeah. We are talking about, and I'm, does it make it into the podcast? Yeah, of course. Okay, it does. So we'll talk in the podcast a little bit later about uh, Netflix has unveiled the Stranger Things animated cartoon that will be coming out um, after the finale of Stranger Things. I'm looking at a list of, uh, of them. Remember... Inspector Gadget. Yeah. That was a good one. Vaguely. Yeah. Then they tried turning a lot of versions. They tried Um, turning that into a real movie. Do you remember who the star of that was? I don't remember who the star of it was, but I remember the actual movie of Inspector Gadget. Yeah. And did you like it? I liked it. It was okay. I don't don't remember it doing very well. Uh, What about Chippendale Rescue Rangers? Yes. They just turned that into a movie. Uh, (laughs) Here's a good one Pinky and the Brain. You Mm -hmm. love that one? That's a good one. I watched it. It's not one of my favorites, but that's just a job. What about Cat Dog? You ever watched that one? Yeah. I liked Cat Dog. Cat Dog's a good one. Um, and uh, I had one more here. Uh, it was, oh, Animaniacs. People love that. Yeah, that was good. And they brought that back on Hulu. I watched that a lot. So, see, that that's when I think Saturday morning cartoons, and it will make sense when you hear us arguing about it when we're talking about Stranger Things. Oh, I don't think we were arguing. <laughs> I think you were just so passionately stuck on something. <laughs> yes, because I have an, an idea in my head of what Saturday morning cartoons are. And so, and so now, if that if that if Stranger, Stranger Things, things doesn't, doesn't like that, that yep. if it's not like Pinky and the Brain, You're then I'm be not going to be. Yeah, then it's not. That's then they're all wrong. <laughs> well, make sure you text us if we missed one of your favorites to eight seven seven two Radio U and just get ready to hear how to get all a flutter. Yeah, that's you guys right. Get a flutter on that one. <laughs> Yeah, we also talked about a dog that has an addiction like no other. Oh, it's really sad. It is sad. It's terrible. But we try to still have a good time with it. I know, but I just, I guess we never thought that uh, it would get so bad for a dog that they could have the same, you know, sort of uh, addiction to something that we could. It's just, uh, it does surprise me, and I, I, like, we mentioned this, but... For, for dogs, I, I've i seen dogs drink beer, like, in videos and stuff, mm-hmm. but I just, it's hard for me to picture a dog being tempted by, like, any other uh, alcoholic drink, so I just am curious what this dog was drinking. Mm. Yeah. Not sure. Is yeah. your dog addicted to anything you can think of? Barking. 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 Yeah. Hitting the window. Oh, uh-huh. my gosh. Hitting the window. Uh-huh. Oh, with his little paws, and my dog Rolo now does this dumb thing. Uh, he'll, because I have, like, front windows, and there's a couch. I don't know why I have a couch there. I make mm-hmm. it comfortable yeah, that's for right. him to of lay course. right there. So he looks and he barks, and if something really makes him mad, mm-hmm. and it's never people. He doesn't bark at people. He barks at dogs, right? especially if they walk on our grass. Mm-hmm. So if this dog is on our grass, he'll just go crazy, uh, barking, pawing, yeah. pawing at the window. He then gets up and goes up to the steps, in the middle of our steps mm-hmm. to the next level, is another window with a little leg. He goes and stands oh up on gosh. there oh, no. to make sure the dog leaves the property, <laughs> and it drives me crazy. And every time the dog leaves, doesn't it? Then he goes back and down. And then he's like, job yep. well done. <laughs> yep, get out of here. Yep, another Show one, him. another one scared away. I'm just like, Rollo, I didn't ask you to do that, and yeah. I thought I gave your pill to stop this behavior. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is amazing how for me and my windows that no matter what furniture I try to put there to deters if you're the dog from barking. She always finds a way. Yeah, and there's she, always snot nose uh, yep, little little mm-hmm. prints all over Pretty it. Pretty embarrassing. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I mean, did we cover enough? Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that's so. it. That's all you need to know. They were good. Make sure you enjoy the podcast today. As always, thank you for listening. We do really appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Even when we guys. just yell about Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> Bye. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Uh, it's hard to believe, but we are approaching the six-year anniversary of the infamous Fire Fest. Remember that? Was that the one where it was a scam and everybody went and was like stuck on the island? Yeah. yeah. And then there was like no food. You got like a little piece of bread. Yeah, yep, yes. exactly. And like a slice of lettuce. Yeah. And Ja Rule put, uh, was part of putting it on. It was him and Billy McFarland was the guy's name. And, uh, Didn't the yeah. guy get arrested or I think jail time? He yeah, something like that. was sentenced to, uh, faced up to 20 years in prison for wire fraud. Uh, but... He's back. Mm. Billy McFarland is his name. And he announced on Twitter yesterday that Fire Festival 2 is happening. No. It's not even a, hey, we're working on it. It is, it's happening. Who would want to sign up for it? That's uh, that's the question, like, isn't it? Like to even perform. Who would want a- in any way to have their name attached to it? But then again, think about this. It's hard to get a festival off the ground to get people to sign up in the first place because... You know, what if it what if it doesn't get the publicity? This is going to have publicity if this goes somewhere. You know what I mean? Well, it's almost like you want it to become a a thing so that people just want to go be a part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the worse that it is, the more excited you are because you can be a part of, like, the social media. Like, I can't believe I'm here. And yeah. It happened again. The more pathetic it is, yeah. the more likely that uh, you can get some, you know, some followers out of it. Because I mean, it's, if it just goes according to plan, that'd be so boring. Would it be in the Bahamas? <laughs> The Bahamas is there. Uh, so the Bahamas is where the first fire festival happened. Yeah. And uh, in the Bahamas, Billy McFarland is still considered a fugitive. This is according to uh, the Bahamas Minister of Tourism said the country will not endorse or approve any event in the Bahamas associated with Billy McFarland. So he can't go back. And he is considered to be a fugitive. So it's not happening there. But where will it be? What they, there's no details besides that he says it's happening. I just don't know uh, how he's able to do this. How is he allowed to well, do this? At this point, Hudson, all he's done is tweet about it. So that yeah. doesn't mean anything actually is going to happen. You would think that they would have put like a lifetime ban of him, him? like <laughs> doing any sort of events. Like you're just not allowed to do any kind of event planning the rest of your life. That should have been a part of you the think, plea deal. You think that'd be considered cruel and unusual punishment? I don't think so. I think he deserved that one. But after it's his, that. It's his uh, gift. It's the gift that he's hey, been I mean, given. You know what? He was <laughs> The first one turned out pretty well yeah, for him. Yeah, he has a special <laughs> talent for him. You know that you're so good when your first party that you plan mm-hmm. gets you facing up to 20 years in prison. That's yes. right. <laughs> it was a wild time. What that can mean, you say? That means you did a few things maybe wrong. Sounds like a wild party. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, if you are hoping to be a part of it, apparently Fire Festival 2 may happen one day. That's according to the guy who put on Fire Festival 1. The fire's back. Which also barely happened. <laughs> This is Radio U's Worst of the Riot. Uh, We have vets in the UK who have just treated what they believe to be the first recorded alcoholic dog. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, who gave him beer? I assume it's beer. How do you know it was beer? I just assume. Uh, Well, I don't know actually what kind of alcohol it was. I'll tell you that the dog is named Coco. Uh, Coco is two years old. He's a Labrador mix. And the reason that they f- even found out that he was uh, alcoholic. Yeah. And this is, it's, it's a really, it's, it's very sad is that uh, his owner had passed away. So they took, you know, once the owner passed away, they took this dog into their care to treat it and, you know, find it a new home and whatever. Uh, but for Coco, the owner would leave alcoholic drinks out after they would go to bed every night. Like, if they didn't finish their drink, they'd just leave it out, and then Coco would get into it. And then he got addicted. And he did that so frequently that Coco was addicted, and they say that they're very fortunate that he was able to make it through the treatment to... uh, to, uh, because the withdrawal was so extreme yeah. that he almost didn't make it. Oh, this is sad. That is crazy, isn't it? I didn't know that could happen. <laughs> I, I guess either. nobody did. They said that um, the dog is not ready yet for adoption because physically he's over, this is weird to say, 
is alcohol addiction. Uh-huh. But they say that mentally it's caused a lot of anxiety. Mm. Some stress is probably on yeah, him. Yeah. So like mentally he still is not ready to be adopted yet. Yeah, that's that's. Oh, someone adopt him though when he's ready and take care of him. Yeah, I, I, when you hear this story, I feel like a lot of the wrong people would want to adopt him. No, yeah, you you could not have alcohol <laughs> yeah, around him. Yeah, you then. gotta be. Yeah. Maybe you and your dog could support each other. Sure. Through your recovery. Yeah, because, that's a good idea. Yeah, because he. Uh, yeah, I mean, sober house. I just didn't know that. Like for my dog. There's no chance that she would touch any. Like she doesn't eat. She she doesn't get. T- she doesn't eat vegetables. She doesn't eat chocolate. She doesn't eat. There's a very limited things that she would eat. I didn't even realize that dogs would be tempted mm-hmm. by alcoholic drinks. Well, you wouldn't think about it's just because the owner had left them out. Yeah, which makes me wonder was the owner also. You know, I know he passed away. Yeah, but we don't know. But did that. he have problems with alcohol? I may, and it makes you wonder what kind of the drinks. Because I think a dog, I think a dog could resist beer. Mm, unless, I don't know. Unless it was really thirsty. No, but that's I just think usually it would just look away. The largest amount of quantity usually yeah. just being left out. Oh, someone, Isaiah. I know you're looking not for, for me. A, <laughs> you don't want another dog. I can't do another dog. It's not even here. I mean, I know. Unfortunately, Coco, I cannot. I cannot be your father. I can't do another dog. But I could see. If, like, I left anything out for Jim, if there was anything in the living room, yeah. if it had an odor, then he, I think he would It'd drink or he would consume it. Yeah, I think so. What? Uh, I'm just going to try to think of what the most appealing alcoholic drink to a dog would be. I don't know. Like, they're, I mean, even if you leave the toilet, like, they're going to drink out of the toilet. Well, like, they just yeah. don't know anything. Uh, the toilet yeah, you're tastes right. better than a lot of alcoholic drinks. I it, don't know if you Because the toilet can't <laughs> smell very, very good, though. But what no. if he was not, like, I know I'm jumping out to the other side, but, like, what if he wasn't taken care of very well mm-hmm. and, like, never given I, water and this was possible. all that was left out? He wouldn't even know any better. That is jumping to conclusion. They don't say anything about. <laughs> I have this whole narrative. Yeah, the wild right. thing is, too. Great it's story. Just, yeah, this guy could have been like a great owner, but uh-huh. just like he was just like leaving it out at night and didn't realize yeah. that the whole time he was just drinking them. How and do you the, not know that your dog yeah. is drinking your beer? See, I don't know how, how he didn't come across that part. Enough, I haven't figured that out yet. Enough to where they say this dog was like very yeah. ill. And if he's just leaving him out at night, that like what is the the dog has to go through a 24 hour day and that there's a difference between it licks up a few drops at the end of the night to it needs it 24-7, and it's, like, stumbling around and jonesing for. Mm-hmm. Uh, See, maybe that's why I think maybe it wasn't beer. Maybe it was a harder liquor. Maybe the guy had, like, a glass that he would leave, like, next to the couch where he was uh, sitting. Like a whiskey yeah. or something. Like a whiskey or something, because then if it was, like, a whiskey, the dog wouldn't need nearly as much. I still yeah. think if a dog, like, dogs are pretty smart, so I feel like if they tasted whiskey, they'd be, and they didn't realize, like, they have no inclination that they want to get drunk, so if they tasted it, and they're not thinking about the effects. They'd be like, I don't want this. Yeah, but what if your owner always had and you're like, look, dad. Like, <laughs> I mean, you just wouldn't know any better. I don't I know. Want, let's mark that one for an update, though. I want to know when Coco has a chance to get a new home. We'll try to keep tabs on that. Oh, but that's sad. I mean, it's a happy ending, though. The the dog is, uh, you know, recovering, doing okay. I think it just they didn't shows know if you. It make it. Even if it's not alcoholic, like, cover your drinks. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's a nice glass of water. And uh-huh. I know you don't want them drinking your glass anyway. Yeah, you don't need to share. But that's kind of. You, you don't know what you're dogs drink it this is the riot radio you how tempted are you guys by using chat gpt uh why don't we just say it this way how tempted are we to cheat when we were doing school stuff is yeah that it yeah i mean now you don't have to do school but you can still use chat gpt to cheat at life sure yeah that's true you ever considered that uh, Have you signed up? I can't even <laughs> find it. You can't find it? If I Google Chad GPT. <laughs> if you aren't smart enough to find it on I Google, I can't even find it. Well, gonna... that means that you're <laughs> so Has anybody honest. opened it that we know? Like, I don't, the people keep on talking about it. I don't know anybody that has actually used it. Yeah. That means that you're trying to. Yeah. Tyler, Tyler from the weekends was using it the other day to, like, try to write breaks for himself. He said they turned out horribly. Oh, really? And uh, <laughs> I tried using it for some stuff, too. Uh, I tried using it. Also to like, well, what would chat GPT say that's funny about this story Yeah, that we talk about on the show? Oh, to kind of get like a summary or something? Yeah, like do they have any like little quips I could use and claim them as my own? And uh, chat GPT doesn't like to joke. It finds that uh, any story I bring up, it seems to think it would be offensive to joke about it. So it doesn't do any so of it. So it'd be pretty hard. It's a kind of a big downer for the show. Well, keep trying, Isaiah. All right. Don't yeah. give up on I cheating. can't even find it. <laughs> so maybe not for doing like radio stuff. It might not be the best, but I'll tell you that it is tempting. If I was in school 
it'd be very tempting to go with chat GPT because I think it'd be hard for uh, like your professors to be able to grade or to be able to discern mm -hmm. if you use chat GPT or not which is obviously what makes it so alluring to people to use. Well, plus you can just get it to give you a starting off point right. and then work from there, which yeah, is using your own brain. So that's not cheating at that that's, point. So. That's a good point, Nikki, if that's what you tell yourself to <laughs> make you feel okay and help you sleep at night. That's totally fine. <laughs> but I do have evidence here. This is from uh, the BBC where they did a report on chat GPT. They had a guy who averages a 2.1 uh, GPA at Cardiff University, which that doesn't sound that great, right? 2.1? That's like barely able to play sports. Actually, I think that's below able to play sports. You they, mean it's good enough? I, think I it's mean, a, it's just good, good enough. enough. <laughs> it looks like in the UK. Because then you're that, not getting, you can't draw too much attention to yourself. Exactly. Right. In the UK, uh, and maybe the grades are a little different, they say 2.1 is like equal to 60 to 69%, oh, that which is, is still low. good enough yeah. in their eyes. So again, it might be a little different, but that's his average. And so he you, he wrote his own 2,500 word essay and then also had one where chat GPT helped him out. And the chat GPT one got the highest grade he'd ever gotten in his life. Nice. And the one Shocker. he wrote on his own got the average 2.1. See, I think that's how you have to be careful when it comes to if you're wanting to get assistance. Yeah. You know, because if suddenly you're just this amazing. That's right. Essay writer, they start noticing like, hey, you're <laughs> applying yourself and uh -huh. they know that you're not really. So. They're going to know that you're cheating. First, you start, you ask Chat GPT to write you an essay. Mm -hmm. And then you say. Write the same essay, but make it slightly worse. That's perfect. And then turn yeah. it in. Uh, or just start using chat GPT from a very young age. Like boxing. You got to start at four years old. <laughs> you start with chat GPT, and then nobody will ever know. Cheat so, your whole life. Exactly what I'm saying. You wouldn't even know when you weren't cheating anymore. Yeah, then. exactly. Yeah. So they are not saying who this guy is from this college because he doesn't want to be <laughs> found out. He doesn't want his grade to be uh, affected. Yeah, but he said that he would likely continue using chatbot to help him. This is actually, this is the best term, frame out essays. Mm. And in the future, then he would hopefully score a little bit higher, but he would still put in some work. Likely story. <laughs> I don't believe if he if he has a two point one right now. Yet again, if you're at home right now with a two point one, that is struggling. I mean, that is low. <laughs> you're averaging you're averaging not even a passing grade. No, like that you're is below. Fine. It that's, says it's considered a good mark. It's passing. That is good. not a good mark. That's what they that's what they say. And in, in the in the UK is different. What are you talking about? 16, I guess they're not as 16. smart in the UK or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's why They grade on a curve. So they're saying that one workaround your school might be changing to mm -hmm. is essays would be eventually possibly turned into real time work that you would have to do in class. Mm. So you could no longer do your essays at home and they would stop some of the cheating that way. Well, that sounds Makes miserable, sense. doesn't it? Oh, See, what's going to happen? You guys are going to mess around yeah. and then you're going to be writing your essays on pieces of paper <laughs> yeah. like they used By to. Hand. And then you're going to be like, why do we have to write on pieces of paper? It's because you're all cheating. Because That's everybody's why. cheating. <laughs> hey, don't get mad because you can't figure it out. You know what? Yeah, if it was, if right. it was me, I'd be cheating too. But I'm I just telling you what's going to happen. you got to use chat GPT to write your news. Every day? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. You make me sound smarter. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> See how, how, how and you, then you in might your get a raise. And review, if they tell you, like, you really improved. Yeah. Your news is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't really? tell them why. Don't knock it till you try it. The Riot with Hudson and Nikki on Radio U. On Radio U. I've got a Stranger Things update for you. Oh, what are they doing? It's not the Stranger Things update everybody wants. A release date for season five, uh, the grand finale. We still don't know when that's coming. But what we do know is that a new Stranger Things series is in the works. And this one is going to be a little different because it's going to be animated. I feel like that's what they do, though, because the finale of like five, that's supposed to be it for Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. So then you're like, well, how can we continue Stranger Things? Yeah. But not have the actors anymore. Animated. Right. And so they're, they're animated is a trick. Yeah. But uh, it does seem that we'll have, as most things in some form or another uh, revolving around Stranger Things, we'll have the creators of the show, the Duffer Brothers, are going to be involved. And this sounds like something uh, that they really wanted to do. Because they wanted it to, they want to give it a Saturday morning cartoon 
feel. So that will be the cartoon style? Yeah. I don't know exactly what that, but I mean, I'm thinking like 30 minute episodes, maybe like they aren't related to each other type thing. Like that's what I remember from Saturday morning cartoons, right? There wasn't like a through line to the cartoons. It'd just be one episode. You could watch it and that'd sure. be it. Uh, but I don't know. Does that mean it's Stranger Things that's truly for children? Or are adults supposed to embrace it, too? I don't know. Well, it just depends. Because sometimes, you know, we'll get something where it's obviously not written <laughs> for yeah. for younger. Mm-hmm. But the stylization of it. What's the one that's coming out? Oh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, like, that's got weird. That's got a really weird look. But then, you you know, you just watch the trailer for it. And you're like, yeah. well, what age is that actually for? Oh, that's definitely for kids, like, right? Like, am I going to? I, I don't, don't know. About, know. Yeah, I don't think it's for young, young kids. But I think that's, like, something that's supposed to be kind of an all-ages thing. And I think this will be, I don't know if this will be, this. if anything, it'll be geared more towards kids. You think so? Based off of them saying Saturday morning cartoon. Who watch? You're an adult. You watch Saturday but, morning cartoons. But I think just because they say Saturday morning cartoons, that's I don't for think, an older person who watched Saturday morning. Yeah, cartoons. and I think too. I mean, there's a lot of things that are like Saturday morning cartoon type shows that aren't for children. Like you think about like The Simpsons and South Park and shows like that. Like they still have that general look and the same like each episode stands on its own. But just because it's like animated doesn't mean it can be for kids. Well, I think that's different. How's that different? I think animated and Saturday morning cartoons are different. <laughs> but what would you consider like The Simpsons or South Park or any shows or like that? Consider those adult animation shows. So you wouldn't consider that Saturday morning cartoon type? No, nah. they've never been on Saturday morning at all. Yeah, but they're saying Saturday morning tar- cartoon type shows. Yeah, but I don't like, think that, that means like it's gonna be Garfield. Saturday morning cartoon <laughs> style, like the old. I think the art style of it will be that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking that he's talking about. It's like art style and like plot type. I think it'll be yeah, like like. It'll be funny, like funny for kids, and like maybe it'll teach them a lesson or something. Like it'll be, it'll be a moral to the story. Like it's gonna be shown on PBS, is what you're saying? Not PBS. <laughs> no, that's what you're like, making it out to be. No, like remember, you just get one like, contained episode. You yeah, like the story, the whole story is in the one episode. Cartoon right. episode. It'll be like The Tick or like Ghostbusters or like that show with Louis Anderson where he was a child. Those. Kind of I just want to keep hearing what cartoons you're coming up with. Yeah, or like <laughs> Blib Blorb and the Fun Gang. Oh, or... See, none of these shows anyone knows. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but those are Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, but I think you're digging too much in the Saturday morning cartoons. And that's th- what they said it's going to be. But that doesn't that's mean that's going to be. That's the specific thing they said. Hey, so you think it's going to be a Saturday morning cartoon How about because this? they haven't made one of those in 30 years. It doesn't even matter. It probably won't even be anything like that. It'll just be on Netflix and it'll just, just be an a 30-minute animated, animated version of uh, Stranger Things because the cast is gone. So do we want it? And if we do want it, what do we want it to be? Uh, (laughs) When do we want it? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think... I'm good when Stranger Things ends just to have it end. I don't have to have a continuation of the story or I don't need to know the origins or anything else. But they tend to just try to stretch things out too Mm -hmm. far. So I probably would not watch an animated cartoon of it. I'm kind of with you on that. I think um, here's... When they mentioned Saturday morning cartoons, I think that really threw that's you. So, love that. That's his you love that. You love that. That's the one thing they said that it's like. You they love that. They didn't say it's going to be Adult Swim style or something. Okay. They said Saturday morning cartoons. Okay, uh, the Duffer Brothers take that back. They just yeah. Wanted to stop and focusing. think about what Saturday morning cartoons were the '80s when the show was happening. When this show is taking place, that's what they're going for. But what I mean so is, it might have a more it, nod to that. Yes, and it plays so much on like or. Saturday morning cartoons would be are something you're nostalgic for. So as an adult, you're not gonna you're not gonna like something that's new. You want to watch old Saturday morning cartoons you grew up with. And so I don't know who this <laughs> this is gonna be for. I'm so excited now. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've talked yourself in and out of watching. Yeah, I, I can't tell if you like it or not. I'm confused. Well, because it's a Saturday morning. Hey, cartoon. Is, this, is this a Saturday morning cartoon, Nikki? I didn't know for sure if it was a Saturday morning cartoon or not. Is that what it's supposed to be? Because that's what they said. That's yeah. what they said. That's okay, the one thing they said. All right, and they did. They did. They did say, say that. They didn't say it would be like The Simpsons. No, oh, no, no. Because you're that's right. not a Saturday morning cartoon. No, it's not. Obviously not. <laughs> Text in what a Saturday morning cartoon is. You go yes. get some water, Seven, all right? Radio, you. <laughs> Why do you do this on the days of my voice struggles? I know, you're so upset. It's the days you make me most upset. Don't say we didn't warn you. This is the worst of the riot. A Saturday morning cartoon, Scooby-Doo. My favorite of all time. A great example 
of what a Saturday morning cartoon actually is, and it actually ties into what we're about to talk about because Isaiah got a nice comment on YouTube, on the Radio You Riot YouTube channel recently. For one of the videos? Yeah. Uh, one that's of our new. Sh- one of our shorts. Usually they're not very nice. Yeah, that's right. This <laughs> this one I th- believe is a compliment. Is somebody texted in, uh, or I guess uh, commented, and they said that you sound like Casey Kasem Jr. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know who Casey Kasem is. It's an old radio guy. How do you old know? Radio. I think he passed away. I never yeah, heard of him. He, he is uh he's no longer with us. But Casey Kasem, one, it's crazy you got into radio. He's one of like the the five, if you made like a Mount Rushmore of important radio personalities, he's It'd one be like of them. That. He's a good one. It's him and Wolfman Jack and uh what's that other guy? Howard Stern and Howard like, Stern, yeah. I don't know. And then me. But uh <laughs> so, rounding but, out the top five. So <laughs> You hey, also, there's still room for yeah. one more. You should also know that he was the voice of Shaggy. Oh! oh. Sh- not in every single Scooby-Doo thing ever, but for a long time, for he's a lot the of voice them, huh? of Shaggy. Yeah. I don't sound like Shaggy, though. He, that's not his, that's his normal voice. So kind wait, of. Like, when you hear his was radio... Was it a compliment, then, at this Yeah, that's what now. I'm wondering. <laughs> when you hear his radio voice and you hear him do Shaggy, then you're like, oh, that makes sense. But Does obviously, it sound similar? He's doing... A, he's, well, he doesn't sound like he's a stoner when he's on the radio. I didn't know for sure if he did the whole, like, Scoob thing. I'm sure you can no, do he it. Go ahead and do it. He, he I didn't know for sure. He doesn't say Scoob when he was hosting the Top 40 Countdown, America's Top 40. Got it. But Like I, Ryan Seacrest does now. Yeah. I, I think, I don't Wasn't know. Wasn't he before? Would, well, maybe he was before then. I, yeah, I, I don't know if Ryan Seacrest directly succeeded him, but that would make a lot of sense, actually, because I think he did it until, like, into our lifetimes. He was still doing the Top 40 Countdown. So that's a huge compliment. Or is it? I need to hear his voice because if he has like a weird, I guess he's a good radio he personality. Yeah. yeah. Unless they really truly mean you sound like Shaggy. Unless they mean, yeah, like Shaggy. But he didn't say that though. Well, that's also be confusing because it could be the, it wasn't me guy. Well, and so feel that'd free be... to direct all your compliments to Radio U Riot on Facebook or YouTube for any Isaiah videos. Of course. I'd love some more compliments. On who you think he sounds like. <laughs> that's right. That, I, that, why don't you try doing like a Shaggy right now then? See, I see... can't like, like, he's like, like Scoob or whatever it is. See, you sound just like him. I didn't sound you like him at all. It. You nailed it. I did. Wait, you I are Casey Kasem more? Jr. I can't. I, I've never even say tried it before. It. Say Zoinks. Zoinks. <laughs> but it doesn't like sound him. like him. I don't like sound him. like yes, Scooby do. or you Shaggy. Do. You sound one hundred percent like him. Uh, no. I'm gonna have to agree with that's it on this. It one. is you my favorite uh, childhood TV show of all time. You're gonna be hosting America's Top Forty in no time. I don't know why Ryan Seacrest is doing it, and not me. <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't even sound like him. Or he'll be voicing the next iteration of, of Scooby Doo. The Radio You Countdown. Thanks for watching the worst of the riot. Since you made it this far, you might as well like, subscribe, and check out riot.radiou.com for even more More riot. riot.